Slide on just like that. What do you think? This is so cool. <laughs> Mommy, mm -hmm. do we even know? We gotta get one for every club. Well, I think you just counted the big clubs, right, Jennifer? I did, Aaron. It's all right now, Phil. Good. If we don't have enough, can we come back for more? Sure. They're perfect. Aren't they, Daddy's gonna love them? Can I help wrap it up? Can I help wrap them? Seventy-two en route from Pearl Street. Shouldn't you close the airports? What about roadblocks? What do you do first? One moment, sir. Is this where you found it, ma'am? No, no, I found it right here on the stairs. Is, is it eight? Yeah, they said they were going to call between eight and ten. What time is it? Honey, it's only a bit after six. 
After you found this, what did you do? Uh, I ran back upstairs to her room, but she wasn't there. She wasn't in her bed. She, she was nowhere. Honey, honey, honey. Oh, oh, they're going to call between 8 and 10, and we have to follow their instructions to the letter. It says if you want her to see 1997, you have to follow our instructions to the letter. Oh, Jesus. They're going to cut off my baby's head. What? Patterson and Trujillo. When was the last time you saw her? Uh, 10.15 last night, 10.30. I went in right after that and, and dressed her and sang the song. And you didn't see her after that? No. All right. This is her room. Did you hear her? I mean, did you get out of bed for anything? A snack, a glass of water, or the bathroom? Our bedroom is on the top floor. It's in the front. This is the back. It's hard to hear. <laughs> Honey, 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 this, this isn't helping. Come on, just get out of here. Who else was in the house? Uh, just Burke, our son. Where's his room? He's way in the front. Did he hear anything, do you know? He's still asleep. Could you show me his room? Uh, should I go to the bank? The kidnapper told me to go to the bank. He wrote that she's safe and unharmed. Of course, he has to say that to get his money, doesn't he? This is Sergeant Whitson at Boulder PD. I've got a kidnapping, and I'd like an FBI liaison. Make sure he brings the protocol manual. Sergeant Whitson, I want to read you what's in the ransom note. Um, it's addressed to Mr. Ramsey. I mean, not Mr. John Ramsey, Mr. Ramsey. Um, $118,000. Oh, thanks for coming. Call. I thought you'd had a heart attack. Patsy? Patsy? What is it? What's wrong? What Immediate execution, that's one. Beheaded, that's two. Uh, she dies. She dies. She dies. She dies. Yeah, it's signed. No, sir, I have no idea. Well, uh, a bunch of their friends have come up. Yeah, altogether, they threatened to kill her six times. So far, you all right? She's in there. Yes, sir. You got a hold on? On her way. What about Larry Mason? Where's he? He's also on vacation. Well, get him in here. Okay. Take this immediately to Commander Eller. <laughs> Be quiet, Mr. Freeman. You're going to take me over to play with Dad. Okay? Atta boy. <laughs> okay. Well, four of business in town. 400 employees called Access Graphics. Well connected, I'm told. Check it out. Thanks. know that we have a report of a kidnapping for ransom in the University Hill District. Three copies. I don't want anyone handling the original and giving one. Linda, the victim's name is John Benet Ramsey. Little girl, six years old. Kidnappers are going to call between 8 and 10. 755 15th Street. That's where you're going. Parents are there. Call you later. The FBI is here. Hey, Ron. Where are your people set up? In the house. The note says they're watching the house. You know what I find really strange about this? They only ask for $118,000. In John's case, they could have asked for $10 million. Whoever wrote it is educated. Attaché. That's not a word any thug can use. And hence. Who says hence? And use that good southern common sense of yours. John's not from the South. Patsy's from the South. Maybe it was meant for Patsy. But it's addressed Mr. Ramsey. 
Patsy, don't you find that really weird? What is this small foreign faction? Terrorists. It's like the war and peace of ransom notes. An ordinary kidnapper says, we got your kid, we want five million, we'll keep in touch, period. And $118,000? How, how's a small foreign faction going to split up $118,000? Burke's going to be all right. He'll be fine. We've got him over my house. <laughs> no, it's not. Does she have the key to the house? Of course she has the key she cleans for us. Wait, wait, wait. Let me get the recorder on. Hello? Uh, look, can I call you back? I, I can't talk on this phone. <laughs> Why didn't they take me? See, don't say that. Don't say that. I carried her upstairs and I read to her for a little while and then Patsy came in and I went downstairs to get Burke ready. Did you lock the house when you came in? Do you have an alarm system? Oh, my God. I never use it. Reichenbach, come over here. I want you to verify something for me. Look like a spider web to you? Yes, sir. I think so. Pineapple. Patterson? John Ramsey just came in. Mr. Ramsey, you have a minute? Yes. We need a writing sample from you, sir. Just a few words and maybe some samples from your wife, like a grocery list, something like that. There's bound to be something here in the kitchen. French, bring your guys in Maybe here. down by the phone here. We're going to clear the house of all officers and non-essential personnel. We're sealing Jean Benet's bedroom, and I want you all, Mr. and Mrs. Fernie, Mr. and Mrs. White. Right oh, yeah. Uh, I wrote this. And uh, this list, this is Patsy's shopping list. Oh, good. Got to be something upstairs here. Oh, wait a minute. This is Patsy's writing tablet. Great. Uh, mind if we get a handwriting sample from you now, sir? Pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. Enemies? That's a strong word. John Ramsey isn't the sort of man who makes enemies. What about Mr. Merrick? Well, he claimed access owed him money, but it all got settled. How much money was he owed? You know, it came out to about the same as John's current bonus. Come again? John's bonus this year. It was $118,000. I don't want to borrow a dog from Aurora. Use one of the sheriff's dogs. The sheriff's dogs are ground scent dogs. We need an air scent dog. So that's what you learned at FBI school, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Mason's right here. Hold on. It's Art right for you. Yeah, Art? Right. Larry, I've got a house full of people wandering around really could use some backup. This is a three-story house plus a basement. I can't keep nine people in sight all by myself. I even think John Ramsey left the house to get his mail a little while ago. All right, why don't you give Ramsey something to do? That way you'll know where he is and uh, hang in there, okay? Hang in there? Yeah, hang in there.
Mr. Ramsey? Mr. Ramsey, could you help me? Could you and Mr. White go through the house one more time? I need you to see if anything is out of place. Something of your daughter's that they might have taken. A, a, a toy, a sweater, anything. It would really help. Mr. White, could you give me a present? Where do you want to go, John? Why don't we start downstairs? Stay with John. Let's go to Burke's train room first. this window. Oh, that was me. I got locked out in August and I broke the window so I could get in. Yes, this is Detective Linda Arndt. I am at 755 15th Street. 755 15th Street. I need an ambulance. I need backup. I have a dead little girl.
This way. We don't know who touched what down there, do we? No, Ramsey and White were down here by themselves. Has any part of the house been secured? The little girl's room, Larry, that's all. Sure, then place the kid in a blanket. The kidnappers are out of there in a heartbeat if something goes wrong. We need to secure this house. Linda, why don't you uh, reserve a half dozen rooms at the Holiday Inn and make sure that the parents are separated. We need to interview all these people. Yes, sir. Entry right here, right? Yeah. Just stand. Look at this. I hate your accent. Did you hear anything Mr. Ramsey said Not last really. night? Linda. Where's everyone? see Mr. Ramsey. Um, let me check in the front. Can we take off before dark? Uh, I'll also have my older kid. Uh, maybe my brother and Patsy's sisters. Mr. Ramsey? Excuse that me. get up into... Excuse me, sir, Mr. Ramsey. Uh, Mike, I'll call you back. Sergeant Larry Mason, where are you going? Uh, I was talking to my pilot. I want to take my wife and my son to Atlanta. I'll feel safer when we're out of Boulder. Well, Mr. Ramsey, you can't leave Boulder. We have a lot of unfinished business here. We need to talk to you. And we've arranged to put you and your wife up at a nearby motel. We can all talk there. Motel? No, Mrs. Ramsey and I won't stay at a motel. The Fernies said we could stay with them, and that's what we'll do. The Fernies. All right, well, then we can all talk there. Can you give us a day? We just lost our child. All right, okay. We'll see you tomorrow. Sir, we need everyone to vacate the house now. I'm gonna read you some words. I need your help. I need you to print these out for me, okay? I'm gonna read these words out and you need to print them out for me, okay? What words? Just print mister. Go ahead. Try it the short way, Linda. M R dot. That's great, Linda. That's great. Now. Print the word attaché. Do you, you need me to spell that for you? Uh-huh. Okay. A-T-T. That's right. A-C-H-E. Great. Great. And 
now beheaded. What? Beheaded. No, 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 So, let's see what Trujillo has for us. The mute. We should be all wrapped up by around 9.30. We could turn the house back over to the family then. Are you sure? It's a big house, and it's at night. I've seen it take two to three days to search a house a fraction the size of this one. Our people are done. Now, have you checked all the rooms? There's 15 rooms upstairs. There's six more in the cellar. The crime scene tech says they're finished. They checked the child's bedroom and the cellar room where she was found. We also dusted the doors and the windows. Plus, we bagged all the evidence. We're done. Why don't you secure it and come back tomorrow? I mean, you don't want to hand the house back to the family, right? And then find out we missed something vital. The techs are satisfied. Well, I'm not satisfied. Tom. Tom. Have you cleared this with Ellard? Tom. Hey, Pete Hofstrom, please. Hi. Yeah, it's me. Uh, listen, you got to talk to Eller. They're, they're closing down the search. Crime scene belongs to the police. If we say we're finished with it, we're finished with it. Your call to make absolutely all I'm saying is, what's the rush? The Ramseys aren't in any hurry to sleep there. The child had duct tape across her mouth. We haven't found the roll that it came from yet. You, you should be scouring every closet, every drawer, every crawl space, vacuum for hairs and fibers. Look for footprints, shoe prints. It's a murder, Commander. I'm head of detectives, Hofstrom, and I sure as hell don't need a DA to tell me this is a murder. It's a murder, and we don't have any witness. In a murder without any witness, there's no such thing as too much physical evidence. You have to collect every scrap. It's not right. It's just it's not right. I don't know. Maybe Ellen knows something we don't know. Yeah? Yeah. You bet. You got it. All right, hold it. None of this stuff is coming down. Put the lights back up. Put the tape back up. We're going to be here all night if we have to. You were definitely asleep. The scream was so loud and so terrifying, it woke me. But you only heard one scream. One was enough. Sure it was a child's scream? I can tell a child's scream from a grown-up scream. It was a child. Larry, I'm way past deadline. That's not my problem. Have you found any signs of a break? I have nothing to say. Well, have you made an arrest? I have nothing to say. You have a prime suspect? I have nothing to well, say. Well, do you have any suspects? Oh, come on, Larry, don't shut me out. I got a right to know. I don't care about your First Amendment. All I care about is solving this case. If there's a dead little girl and the public has a right to know if there's a murder on I the loose. I got nothing to say. Oh, come on, then talk to me off the record. Tell me what I can and can't print off the record. Off the record. Turning the tape recorder off. Off the record. What do you want to know? Cause of death. I can't tell you that. Was she shot? No. Stabbed? No. So she was strangled? You can't print that. Can I print that she wasn't shot or stabbed? Yes. Will you burn me on this, there? I'll never speak another word to you, so help me God. Not one. Not okay. one word. wearing a long-sleeved, white, collarless shirt. Tied loosely around the right wrist, overlaying the sleeve of the shirt, is a white cord. Did you ever mention that before? That he'd broken into his own basement? No. And you'd believe him, and he'd do something like that? Of course. Why would he lie? Okay. So the two of you come through the room with the broken window, you go through the boiler room, towards the door at the end, and, and, and Ramsey's ahead of you, is that right? Exactly. Like earlier. Uh, like earlier? What do you mean? Were you two down there before? Not John. Me. I told you that. Or did I tell the woman detective? Maybe I told one of the uniformed policemen. I, I know I told somebody. Well, tell me now. Well, a few minutes after my wife and I got there, I searched the house. You know, room by room. John Benet, John. Then I went down into the basement, and that was the first time I saw the broken window. Actually, I picked up off of the floor a shard of glass and placed it on the window ledge. And I went through the boiler room to the room at the back. I opened the door. You opened the door? Yes, but I didn't see anything. The room was pitch black. Uh, felt around for a light switch, and when I didn't find one, I went back upstairs. 
Did you see anything? The room was pitch black. Mr. Y, what time is this? Maybe 6.30. Somebody got into that house. I don't know how, but they did. They wanted to hurt that family. They're a beautiful family. And she was the most beautiful child. around the neck is a length of white cord which is flattened and measures approximately a quarter inch in width. It appears to be consistent with the cord that is around the wrist. This wooden stick is irregularly broken at both ends and there are several colors of paint and glistening varnish on the surface. Fluorescent examination indicates smears of residue on upper right thigh. Marking is item 24. I hear she's still wet the bed. Is that true? Oh, yeah. Every morning, when I came in, Patsy already had the sheets off the bed and into the washer. The blanket was already in the dryer. Which blanket? John Bonet has her own special white blanket. Did Patsy ever get upset by all this bedwetting? I mean, day after day, washing those sheets? What's the big deal? The washer's right outside the bedroom. You ever notice any unexplained bruises? Unexplained? You know, a bruise that doesn't look like it was made by a fall or a bump. Did she ever complain to you about being hit by either of her parents? No. Did you ever see Patsy or John raise a hand to her? Never. Never. You don't understand these people. Patsy is just a sweet person. She spends every spare minute with those kids. Bedtime stories, school projects, whatever they needed. The Ramseys love their children. Who has a, a typical kidnapping ransom note you might find in any movie scenario. Investigative sources have told us the note directed the family to pay $118,000. It also mentioned future demands, conditions the police planned on meeting. The Boulder police held an 11 o'clock press conference this morning. There wasn't a thorough search of the house conducted initially. It's a fairly large structure, and we had no reason to believe the child was in the house at that time. We were treating it as a kidnapping for ransom, based on the statement of the parents and on the contents of the notes. John Ellis. Yeah, Captain. Yeah, well, I really appreciate the offer, Captain, but I don't want you to have to leave Denver shorthanded, not with all the murders you have over there. Uh, I will. I will, and thanks for calling. Back. Nobody's being so damn generous. Denver PD, Sheriff's Office, even the FBI wants to hold our hands. So what do you got? John Eller. Uh, yeah, you, uh, go ahead. Preliminary test indicates that the ransom note was written on paper, torn from a pad, found in the Ramsey house. Uh, thanks. You got that? Got it. What else? As of now... We have no indication of forced entry, but the burglar alarm was off and lots of people seem to have keys. Meyer found a subdermal hematoma below a skull fracture, so it's possible a blow to the head contributed to her death, but it might have been the rope around her neck is what killed her, and we still have no idea what room she was killed in. The coroner sent a bunch of samples to the CVI labs, and one of them from her thigh. Looks like it might be semen. Semen. I want the Ramsey's questions as soon as possible. You know, Walker and I didn't think there ever was a kidnapping. Well, I got a lot of questions, and I'm sure we should have asked them yesterday. Don't count on getting all out of the mother. The lawyer says she's having a medicated. Good evening. I'm Michael Bynum. I'm a friend of John's and general counsel for Access Graphics. Come in, Miss Kelly. Miss Arthur. They're, uh, well, broken-hearted. Doesn't even begin to express how they feel. 
Larry Mason, Boulder Police. Jeff Ramsey. Sergeant Mason, Detective Arndt, this is John's brother, Jeff. Mr. Ramsey, may I? Sure. Well, sir, first thing that we want you to know is that your help and your wife's help absolutely vital in helping us find the killer. What we need to do is go minute by minute through the other night and yesterday morning. Now? Well, sir, yes. Well, yes, sir, absolutely, now. And we found these things, Mr. Ramsey, now. And these are that the sooner you get going, the better, while memory's still fresh. All I'm thinking about right now is my wife, family. You saw her. <laughs> yes, sir, we understand, but uh, for our purposes, we have to move I on I can't this thing. think straight right now. Can I call you with a good time for both of us? I, I, I would appreciate that. The death of six-year-old John Benet Ramsey has put a cloud over this quiet Boulder community. It is the city's first homicide of 1996. And the fact that this talented little girl was found strangled to death in her own home in an upscale neighborhood has many in shock. It doesn't seem random to me somehow. It seems like there's something fishy kind of behind it. And that's what's really kind of shocking. Not, not that it would happen there on 15th Street, you know, which is a nice part of town, but just that it would be, you know, I don't know. It just, it just kind of gives me the creeps. Well, so far, our A-list includes the housekeeper, the gardener, Santa Claus, the seamstress, the Fernies, the whites, and, of course, all of the Ramseys. Yeah. Yeah, hold on. Linda Art. Hello, Mr. Bynum. Sir, can I put you on the speaker? That way there'll be no misunderstanding. Okay, Mr. Bynum, will you repeat what you just said? Certainly. In my capacity as a friend, I've advised John and Patsy Ramsey not to give any testimonial evidence until they have chosen a lawyer. Mr. Bynum, I'm going to put Larry Mason on. You remember him? Mr. Bynum, the Ramseys have yet to retain a criminal attorney? Not yet. Uh, I also want to inform you that right after the memorial service here tomorrow, they're taking the body to Atlanta for burial. In that case, we would like the Ramseys to come in today so that we can collect non-testimonial evidence. Fingerprints, saliva, hair, handwriting, blood. I'll have them available by late afternoon. See you later. Sample, sir. Just because you haven't interviewed the Ramses, you can't use the body as a weapon. It's not right. I don't care. It's unethical. I don't care. It's flat out illegal. It's a police matter. Mason, instruct the coroner not to release the body. I won't. I can't break the law. You either get on board or you get the hell out. That's your call. And you got it. It's illegal. John Meyer. John. Yeah, it's John Eller. Listen, uh, why don't you take another day or two with the, with the Ramsey child? You might find some additional evidence. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, then I'm asking you to hold the body as a person. Well, then I'm telling you, do it. <laughs> Just one more saliva sample for me. I did not kill my baby. <laughs> John Benet Ramsey in Little Miss, Colorado, 1995, has raised many questions regarding her involvement in the child beauty pageant world. One of the murdered child's dance instructors has suggested that the provocative nature of John Benet's performance was encouraged by her mother, herself a former Miss West Virginia. Critics argue these pageants sexualize young girls and inadvertently are creating a hunting ground for sexual predators.
stay back. Yeah. Hey, you're supposed to catch criminals, not protect them. say this to all of you right now. Nobody in this family had anything to do with this child's death. So we can only pray that this terrible thing can be resolved soon so that this family can find some measure of peace in the knowledge that their child is with God just as God is with them. She was the most thoughtful little girl. She was beautiful. Thank you. I'll always treasure her. Jean Benet Ramsey seems light compared to the heavy hearts at her funeral. Her parents, John and Patsy, brought her back to their former Atlanta church, a place they used Someone to call home. Family held one another Last tight, night, huddled close. Patsy told me that Jean Benet and she sang together wherever we go, whatever we do, we're gonna go through it together. Jean Benet was found murdered in her Boulder, Colorado home the day after Christmas. The Little Miss Colorado Beauty Queen's life ended in strangulation. Today, her casket is part of the And then, uh, I just realized that was the last time I heard her voice. Mrs. Bacon Cookies. Thank you, Do not grasp our situation. We have been hammered by all kinds of ugly rumors. I'm sorry. But when you go and hire lawyers and a public relations representative, and you refuse to talk to the police, you hand people the perfect opportunity to think the worst. You have to go back to Boulder and cooperate with the police. Please, please, this is unthinkable, John. Don't hire lawyers before you talk to the police. What will anybody think of parents who defend themselves to attorneys when the body of their murdered child John, is barely cold. John, please. please. Just get away from my door. I anything by shouting. The top Boulder legal expert warned yesterday there was nothing inappropriate about John and Patsy Ramsey leaving the state to attend the young beauty queen's funeral in Atlanta. And now the day's happening. Yeah, the great thing about narcotics is that there are no mysteries. Uh, the only question is what day and what time the dope shit will arrive. Hey, Karina. Is this steak almost finished? Because i got to go in like an hour. I thought what you really liked about narcotics was running around in those silly disguises. First time I met him, I actually thought he was a hippie burglar. He'd be a great burglar. Oh, thanks a lot, Dad. Uh -oh. And Jane Foley's in at the control. Here you go. Thanks. So, Karina, meet 
medium rare. Actually, I think you would have made a very bad burglar. Always dropping things. Commander Elder, please. Steve Thomas. Hi. No. It... Yeah, I'll put it on right now. All right. Take me a moment. What channel is CNN on? The 17. Hard grief to resolve itself. We now have to find out why this happened. Is there some question of blame higher than defensiveness? It's not just an attorney. We are also assembling an investigative team. I want the best minds this country has available to help us resolve. What is he talking this. about? We're the investigative team. What is he talking about? Outsiders, outside of your family, your circle of friends. Yes, our family is a loving family. It's a gentle family. We have lost one child. We know how precious their lives are. Please interview you all day on the day of her death. For hours, they asked us questions. There is a killer on the loose. Absolutely. If I were a resident of Boulder, I would tell my friends to keep, to keep your babies close to you. Oh, for God's sakes. Well, turn it back on. I want to hear this. What's there to hear, Dad? I mean, they're too deep in grief to talk to us, but they could talk on TV? I mean, they could go on TV and talk and talk and talk. I want to hear this, Steve. Fine. At least John Bonet will never have to know cancer or the death of a child. Yes. There's a killer on the loose. Keep your children close. They make me sick. Oh, I don't know. It's it's as dumb as hell, but they just lost a child. Now, maybe they're not thinking smart. You believe them. Well, I don't know if I believe them or not, but I, I don't disbelieve them either. What's important is you know all of us are here for you. Don't be afraid to come talk to us. That goes for parents, too. Nobody is too busy for you, okay? Yes, Jillian. We only live two blocks away from John Bonet. What if the bad person comes to our house? I promise you, he won't. I, mean, I can't even remember when something like this ever happened before. Nobody can. Tonight, you should all feel safe. Yes. Yeah, John Bonet's parents could have told her that, too. That's true. And they would have been right. This is a rare occurrence. Now, I think it might be a good idea if we made some drawings about our feelings, okay? While police try to solve this crime, people in the community wait to hear answers. One woman stopped by the house on her lunch break today to place some dried sage near the family's home. It brings up a lot of issues, and it, it brings a lot of hurt, anger, um, that somebody could take somebody else's life, especially a little girl that had her whole life ahead of them. Boulder's mayor felt compelled to attend the news briefing. People in Boulder have no need to fear that there is someone wandering the streets of Boulder has, has been portrayed by uh, some people, particularly in talk radio, uh, looking for young children to attack. Boulder is safe. It's always been a safe community. It continues to be a safe community. She admits, though, she's received no information from police, and she's basing her reassurances on media reports that there was no forced entry to the home the killer probably had to know the layout of the house fairly well. The detective expressed frustration about conducting an investigation under the spotlight of the media. Older citizens we talked with seem more interested than fearful of the case. Now, Professor, you teach criminal law at the university. What do you make of the fact that John and Patsy Ramsey have gone and hired separate lawyers? Oh, I wouldn't make too much of that. It's really not unusual for husband and wife to have their own lawyers. Under the law, they're not treated like a unit. They're separate individuals. Possible that their interests might even conflict. But don't you think it makes them appear more suspicious? Yeah, out there in the world, 
people imagine that they ought to just trust someone who hires defense counsel. They imagine that criminal lawyers are only for the guilty and the innocent don't have any need for them. But that's a mistake, a foolish mistake. I'd say she behaved like a mother under terrible stress, whether it's innocent stress or guilty stress. I couldn't tell. Ellen's group seems to have made up their minds as one Ramsey or the other. Pray not. gentlemen. Oh, I agreed with you. I can see by your shirt. My Saturday shirt. I knew you had a sister. <laughs> okay, how do we look? Are we talking days, weeks, months? Months. The police just finished nine days searching the house. They logged over 800 items. It's a long road. Anything point to anything? More towards somebody from inside the house rather than an intruder, but until the police do a lot more work, I'd make no assumptions. Autopsy? What did that give us? Vaginal bruising, some stains that look like semen, but uh, the test results haven't gotten back yet. And where are we with the Ramses? Hair, blood, handwriting samples, but no interviews, not yet. They're barricaded behind their attorneys. Yeah, yeah, the rich are circling the wagons around themselves. John Eller's here. Send him in. John, good to see you. According to reliable sources, John Bonet was garroted. According to authoritative sources, the ransom demand was for a peculiar amount. According to reputable sources, the paper the note was written on came from inside the Ramsey house. According to unimpeachable sources, the police left a lone detective in the house for three hours with nine suspects. Suspects the detective could not control. This stuff is killing us, and your office is leaking it. We're not leaking it. Like hell. No, it, it, it happens that we talk to the press more often than you do, which is served us pretty well for the last 25 years. No, no, that's your way, not ours. Anything that gets out hurts us. If it's accurate, it tips off the killer. If it's derogatory, it ruins us with potential witnesses. These stories make us look like the Keystone Cops. All right, say. all right. Turn off your flamethrower. What is it you really want? The Ramseys have hired Brian Morgan. We're having no luck with him. Tell the Ramseys to talk to us. I'll do what I can. Anything else? can't do that, John. If the victim's parents were dirt poor, any decent public defender would still advise them not to speak to you. All the Ramseys are doing is exercising their constitutional rights. They don't have any rights. Constitutional rights are for people who've been charged. Nobody's charged the Ramseys. Not yet. If they're not suspects, they're witnesses. And under Colorado law, witnesses have even more rights to refuse to talk to you. Or have you forgotten that, Commander? Damn it. Which side are you on? Always a pleasure, John. Peter, you're asking the Ramses to cooperate with a man who behaved exactly like a kidnapper. John Eller was ready to hold their child's body until he got his interview. Brian, cut the crap. We've always been square with each other. You can explain to the Ramseys that Eller's just an old-fashioned cop under enormous pressure in a high-profile case, but he still wants what we all want, to catch John Bonet's killer. Well, it might be easier to persuade Patsy if we could all agree to let the interview take place at a neutral site. White House somewhere around here. I don't know. That had a big circle driveway. She must have been six when these were taken. Do you believe in miracles? I didn't. But I was wrong. In the summer of 1993, Patsy was a stage four of ovarian cancer. And stage four, supposedly. Okay, my little girl. I want you to give this to mommy. She's a really like. I bet I will. Uh-huh. She's a good girl. Oh, that looks good. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. That's delicious. Can you sign that, Johnny P? What is it, delicious? It is very tasty. What Grandma made is delicious. <laughs> now, is it, uh, delicious? Oh, it is for sure delectable. What's delectable? Well, delectable is 
Delicious plus plus, just like you, Angel. Delicious plus plus? Cool. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Cool. In May of 1994, she got well. The main thing that saved her was her family, her husband, and her children, and especially Jean-Benet. Mrs. Paul, having spent a lot of time visiting with your daughter, um, did you ever notice anything odd about Jean-Benet's toilet habits? Yes, and you know. When she would ask for any grown-up within shouting distance to wipe her. Any grown-up? No shame whatsoever. And anyone she called would wipe her? Oh, mm-mm. Well, no. there were some people who thought she was old enough to wipe herself. But a doctor said that because of the regressed potty training because of Patsy's illness, this was not abnormal. Did you ever notice anyone go out of his way to wipe her? Well, who in the world would do that? Well, here we have a child who asks grown-ups to wipe her private parts. Is it possible someone might see that as an invitation? Oh. oh. I'm not sure that I like what you're implying, sir. I'm not implying anything. This conversation is definitely over. I'd appreciate it if you left. The phone is ringing at a steady pace at this newsstand in Boulder. Most people are calling to voice their support. Eads News and Smoke Shop will drop the edition of The Globe that comes out on Monday. Eads had planned to carry the issue with crime scene photos of Jean Benet Ramsey. But late in the day, store managers changed their minds. They just got to the, it wasn't in their interest to carry something like that. We're in support of the Ramsey family. Pete Ruth says it doesn't matter who will or won't be selling the issue, he won't be reading it anyway. Uh, that's just pushing it too far. A little, little, little decency would be, would be good. Globe spokesperson Tony Frost says that is not the case. We took very careful consideration before publishing these photographs. We had a large selection to choose from, and we chose what we feel are the less sensational ones. From the beginning, sources have told News 4 catching the killer would mean proving forensic evidence found inside the Ramsey home. That includes bodily fluids found on JonBenet Ramsey and elsewhere in the house. Publicly, police will not say when that lab work will be finished. Here, Chris, for your mom. By the hand delivery. Alex, you need to know Boulder PD has requested we no longer copy you on our findings in the Ramsey case. Wait a minute. Eller's withholding evidence from us? Pete, I don't take sides. You and Kobe's people need to get on the same page in this case. Thanks for the heads up. What does this say? The residue on her thigh was not semen? Smeared blood. You sure? We're sure. Then there's no evidence any male ejaculated on the child's body. Right. How did Eller react? I'm told he was counting on it being semen. John Ramsey semen. Pete, there was vaginal bruising. Doesn't that indicate some kind of sexual contact? Yeah, you could make a case for that, but without ejaculation of some kind, the defense could argue that the bruising came from anything, from uh, child masturbation or riding a new bike. If I were the defense attorney, heaven forbid, that's what I'd argue. You want to link this killing to a molestation, you got a real steep hill to climb. One, there's no evidence of forced entry. Two, the ransom demand is for $118,000, which is exactly the same as John Ramsey's bonus, which it's unlikely that anyone else would know about that except someone in the family. Three, everything that we have found has pointed to Patsy Ramsey as the buyer of the cord and the duct tape. Four, the paper used for the ransom note came from one of Patsy Ramsey's own writing pads. And five, the handwriting analysis of the ransom note excludes every single person that we have tested to date except for Patsy Ramsey. Now, we think we have enough probable cause for an arrest, and we would like your support in drafting up an arrest warrant immediately. Steve, I, I think you left a few things out. For instance, the open cellar window had a scuff mark below it and a suitcase below that. Yeah? Now, face it, you, you, you can't say for sure that Patsy Ramsey wrote that note, and you can't say for sure that she bought the tape or the court, and even if she did, are you saying that she bought it with the intent to commit the crime? You can't prove that someone else didn't enter that house that night. You don't know where the child was killed and what the weapon was. 
You, know, you don't have a makeable case. You're not even close. Let us arrest her. Put her into the system. I promise you, when Patsy Ramsey is mugged and printed, and when the flash goes off in her face and the cell door slams shut behind her, she will fold. She will beg. No, if she begs at all, it'll be for her lawyer. The moment when Patsy Ramsey might have given it up is long gone. At least let us try. You've as much as admitted you want to arrest her to coerce a confession out of her. We can't permit that. Alex, this is done all the time. Not by me. Bring us a case. Newsroom, please. Julie, hi, it's me. Well, it's pretty messy. We're getting nowhere with Hunter's office. Blood all over the floor. Mostly ours. See Thomas. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, that's our case. Uh, okay, slow down, slow down. Wolf. What's his first name? Chris. And tell me why you think he was involved. Uh huh. Uh huh. What's your name? Jackie Dilson. We went to a party, but then he wouldn't eat dinner with me, so I went to bed alone. So I wake up around 5 30. This is the morning of the 26th. Right. I wake up around 5 30, and Chris is in the shower, and his jeans and his sweater are on the floor, and they're filthy. Now, how did they get filthy? Then that night, we're watching the news, and we hear that the kid is dead, and he goes ballistic. I hope the bastard dies. He was abusing her. There's nothing too evil for him. He's talking about the father. Then the next day, he's like a caged animal. All he does all day long is pace. Pace, pace, pace. Hey, 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 legendary Boulder police. They'll catch child killers, but they sure can't put the cuffs on traffic violators. They can sure do that. We want your help, Chris. Beautiful. Boulder police wants my help. So they bust me. Why should, why should I help? Because you have a suspended license and we can't ask a judge to let us confiscate your car. The judge will do that. You willing to take that kind of chance? What do you want? No. That's, uh, what do you mean, no? No. N-O. No. I, I had nothing to do with it. I'm not going to copy this. Well, if you didn't have anything to do with the crime, then what are you so afraid of? I'm just not gonna take orders from you and save it for the mollies and the hill rats that you rammed up on Saturday nights. Hey, quick smile. No. Pull your head up. Pull your head up! Do you like this wolf guy at all, or did he just piss you off? If you like him, we'll work him. If you're just pissed off, I don't want to waste any more time with this creep. He's here. Let's get samples. We can't unless we tie him to the Ramsey case. You want to spend half a day going through every minute of his life? No. I don't want to waste my time on this bastard. Let's book him on a suspended license. Sorry, I'm late. No problem. I brought you some pictures. Yeah. These are all the players of the different people in Boulder. Okay. Now, listen, I just want you to know that you're not under any kind of time pressure here. Don't feel like you've got to go out and turn up the story of the year, your first day. Okay. Just take it easy, take your time, and try to make good sources. Oh, I, uh, I have written for newspapers before, Yeah, so. but you've never covered a case like this before. Okay. You've got all my numbers, right? Yeah, yeah. Give me a call. All right, thanks, Steve. Sources. The Boulder police believe they have more than enough evidence to arrest Patsy Ramsey, the death of her six-year-old daughter. Prosecutor Alex Hunter refuses to back them up. He claims there is insufficient evidence. Julie, did your sources tell us anything about that evidence? Well, they're being pretty quiet about it, George, but they did indicate that they were searching for a history of sexual abuse in the family. All right, all right, listen up, listen up. Ladies and gentlemen, the CBI Bureau just found a hair. And they found it on the white blanket the little girl's body was lying on. So, I want pubic and body hair samples from everybody. I want them yesterday. The sooner we match this, the sooner we're home. Heading into court, media attorney Tom Kelly argued the autopsy report of JonBenet Ramsey should be made public. The right to know is the right to know today. The autopsy report contains 
several important details. According to several sources, because police failed to secure the Ramsey home until after the body was found. Another source said that the first detective on the scene, a specialist in sex crimes, was so busy treating the Ramseys as victims, she never took care of business. There is not one story that doesn't make me out to be the person that screwed everything up. It's not fair. I say the stories are lies. You have got to protect me. Linda, do you know that my policy is we do not discuss details or investigations with the press? You're hanging me out there, Chief. You know, if it bothers you that much, Linda, I can always take up the case, or I'll just reassign you. Whether you leaked this stuff to the media or you gave it to the Ramsey's lawyers, it doesn't matter. We are not going to share information with you from now on. He shut us down a long time ago. The CBI was told to withhold its lab results from us. Under Colorado law, we don't have to work with you. We can kick your ass out of this case. When our job is done, we'll bring the case material over. If you don't plan to share information, just how are we supposed to proceed? We do what we want. And if we need your help on the law, we call you. as people get so obsessed with the Ramseys, they won't even see another possibility. They ignore facts they don't like, they, they never discuss exculpatory evidence with us, and as soon as a, a suspect has a half-baked alibi, he's cleared. Kobe, do you understand what that means? You will never deliver what we need to prosecute this case. No sharing means the killer will walk. Is that okay with you? No, 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 that's not okay with him, just as it's not okay with us. Tom, what do we do? What do we do? We let Eller investigate. That's what we do. And when he's finished, we let you prosecute. But in the meantime, in the meantime, why don't you and I hold a joint press conference and show the world that we're still on the same side? No, no, no. If the police want to go it alone, let Kobe go to the press alone. All right. Well, how about we set up a joint war room right here in the Justice Center with everything we have, computers, files, the whole nine yards, and our people and your people get together for status reports. What about that? So you're saying you will share your information with us? Well, I'm... I'm sure that Eller will want to limit accessibility to the computers to his guys, and he'll want to decide what information we pass on to you. But, guys, come on. We're going to be reasonable. We know sooner or later you're going to get the case. I don't want to depend on John Eller. Maybe we'll hire our own investigator to review the case from a defense point of view, see, see what we're up against. Well, I don't know if Eller will be happy about that. Well, then he won't. Look, to tell you the truth, one of Eller's own detectives suggested Lou Smith just a couple of weeks ago. Before he retired, he closed over 150 murder cases. He's a legend. We'll make sure he stays on your side of the field. Well, MSNBC's all over this one. He's handing us off to Rather. How long we got to be up on the bird? I have a, a gut feeling about this case that I, I don't usually get. And that is that we're going to solve this case. I am not going to file charges until I feel I have it. The road to justice will not be paved with shortcuts. I want to say something through you, I want to say something to the person or persons who committed this crime, to the person or persons who took this baby from us. The list of suspects narrows. Soon no one will be on that list. You have stripped us of any mercy we might have had at the beginning of this investigation. We are going to see that justice is served and that you pay for what you did. We will ensure that justice will be served for this community, for this nation, and most importantly, for Joe Monet. You did a great job, Alex. Really Thanks. great. You did it again. You must know something that I don't know to sound so confident. I didn't know we were that close. I might have gotten a little carried away. <laughs> well, when making a profile, 
the FBI will begin by explaining to you that your daughter was at a low risk of being killed by a stranger. She was in bed, at home, in a good neighborhood. Both her parents are in the house. What stranger takes a chance invading a house under those conditions? And on top of that, John Bonnet rarely came in contact with strangers. That's not true. She met strangers all the time at the pageant. Are you sure about that, Mrs. Ramsey? Didn't you keep a pretty close eye on her? How can you be sure that the FBI profilers would tell the Boulder police that somebody in our house killed our daughter? Look, Mr. Ramsey, after heading the Behavioral Science Unit for 15 years, I can tell you that what they'll suggest, without saying it, is that either you or your wife was involved in the killing, the cover-up, or both. Just because we were home? No. No, they see a lot more than that. They see the note, and the cord, the tape, the noose, and all those things tell the profilers that the killer had no fear of being discovered during the crime. He or she felt absolutely comfortable in your house. Tying the cord around John Bonet's neck took time, Mr. Ramsey. Carrying her body down to the wine cellar and wrapping her in a blanket took time. But the perpetrator was in the cellar with her. Nobody could hear him down there. He could take all the time he wanted. Maybe. But the most important piece of behavioral evidence is still the note. When was it written? If it was written before, then maybe it's an attempted kidnapping. But if it was a kidnapping and it went wrong, why leave a note and take the chance that the police can identify the handwriting? So when was it written? Well, I can tell you this. The length points to it being written by someone who was in no hurry to get the hell out of your house. Now, trust me, this is a crime scene analysis. And based purely on that, the profilers are bound to like the two of you for the killing. But I've interviewed you, and they have it. You're what's missing from their appraisal. Yes. We have been missing. I think it's time. Brian... What's happening with negotiations for our interviews with the police? They're moving slowly. Can we speed them up? Not without making lots of concessions. If we have to, make them. It's time the police heard our side of the story. If John Douglas here believes we're innocent, why shouldn't they? I just don't think it's a good idea, that's all. I think it'll work out fine if I could just have your support on that. You have my support. All right, then. Good morning, everyone. May I introduce Lou Smith? who worked homicide in Colorado Springs for the last 30 years. As Chief Kobe and I have agreed, he'll be cataloging and reviewing the case for prosecution. This guy going to run our case from Thank the back seat? Thank you, Alex. Uh, my watch. Listen, we're, we're going to have regularly scheduled status meetings here in our new war room to swap information. And uh, I should also mention that Pete here is in close contact with the Ramsey's lawyers to get their clients to agree to an interview with our office. So uh, anything you need, let us know. All right? Where do we start? Trip, take a look at these marks. Here on our back. Here below the ear. distances between them. They look the same to you? Pretty close. What do you think they are? What about a stun gun? How are you? Hi, are you Alex? Yes, I am. Hi, I'm Jeff Shapiro. A reporter working on the Ramsey case. How do you do? For who? The National Newspaper. Oh, I see. Yeah. This is called Code of Silence. I wrote about the O.J. Simpson trial. Very interesting subject. You should check it out. Well, I will. Thank you. How's this case going? Close to an arrest? No, no. The rumors that a uh, pedophilia is an area you're going to explore. Any, any truth to that? Well, we explore every area. Is it true that the stuff found on our body wasn't semen? You'd have to ask the police. But isn't it true that you and the police aren't on the best of terms? Oh, absolutely not. Uh, geez, I gotta run. Thanks for this. Let's talk again. Oh. No, Joe, I didn't tell him. Okay, okay, you don't have to yell, all right? I'll just go back and take care of it. Just, just tell me what you want. 
Okay, rumors that the Ramses and Whites are feuding. Okay, what else? Okay, whether the ransom note threatened her with beheading. And more about pedophilia. Done. Taken care of. Okay? Okay. Hi, uh, Alex Hunter, please. My name is Jeff Shapiro. keep my old office furniture when they moved us in here about 19 years ago. It's very nice. Mr. Hunter, I, uh, I wasn't straight with you the other day. I, I work for the Globe. I know. I just got off the phone with your editor. Wait, you talked to Joe Mullins? I, I thought you weren't talking to the tabloids because you were furious at the Globe for publishing the crime scene photos. I was, and I am. Doesn't mean I won't still talk to Joe Mullins, or to you, for that matter. Really? Okay, um... Have a seat. Okay, um... I heard a rumor that the ransom note threatened beheading. Is, is there anything to that? I can't talk about the contents of the note. Okay, um... What did, you, what did you mean when you said you were going to explore pedophilia? Don't be naive. You got a beautiful six-year-old girl with a history of appearances and children's beauty pageants. How could we not explore pedophilia? Are you uh, exploring the pageants? Well, we'd love to, but we don't have any useful sources in that world. And even if we had them, we couldn't pay anybody. Not the way the tabloids can if they want to. Yeah, it's an interesting area. There are lots of interesting areas in this case, Jeff. And maybe in time, you'll find something of interest to me. Okay. Okay. Boulder police asked the FBI Child Abduction and Serial Killer Unit to review the conditions for a Ramsey interview. The FBI's conclusion? The conditions were unacceptable. The Ramseys say they're still willing to talk to Boulder authorities, at least for now. The Boulder police say they still want to talk to the Ramseys, as long as the conditions laid down lead to what in their estimation would be worthwhile interviews. The interviews will be conducted by two Boulder police detectives chosen in consultation with Alex. Are Alex's own investigators eligible? No, nope, strictly Boulder PD. It's their case. Okay? We know it's their case. Eller does nothing but rub our noses in that. Okay. Ryan, is that okay? Can you sit in as an observer? Uh, it's up to the police, but I, I will ask. Now, we have to talk about location. Uh, it has to be someplace official. We'd find your offices acceptable. Okay, our offices. All right, we're all agreed on April 30th, starting at 9. That's fine. Thank you. Four months of work for one interview. The autopsy report shows pineapple in the small intestines. <sighs> Patsy told Art that the last thing John Bonnet ate was cracked crab at the Whites. Whereas this autopsy report shows that she could have eaten that pineapple later than that. Okay, let's not mention the pineapple. Just let Patsy lock herself into whatever story she tells. Hey, I thought you were in California. Just landed. What I got. This is a section of Patsy Ramsey's 911 call that she made at 5:52 a.m. as enhanced by the super text at Aerospace. Who's that? Not very clear. 
There were only two kids in that house. Burke? Your brother? When they find her missing, they check Burke's room, because sometimes she sleeps there. Right, but she wasn't there. They said they don't wake him up until around 7. Okay, let's see if Patsy or John mention this to anybody. not even mentioned. Okay. okay. She's uh, crazed out of her mind. She's screaming for Jesus. She doesn't see her son. Far-fetched here. But John, John answers her, which means that he sees him and hears him. I mean, why didn't John tell anybody? And I can't wait to see the look on their faces. When no, 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 no. No hint that this boy's voice is on the tape. Otherwise, their lawyers will just figure out how to explain it away. Just let them lock themselves into their story of what happened when she called 911. Wait, Steve, we got them in a lie. Why not use it on... No, there will be a proper time. Mr. Ramsey, for the record, let me note that you are here with your attorney, Patrick Burke. Uh, for the Boulder Police Department, beside myself, Steve Thomas, Detective Trujillo, and observing for the District Attorney's Office, Peter Hofstrom. Okay. Mrs. Ramsey, can we start with the afternoon and the evening of Christmas Day? We can try. 